pilgrims progress <coughs> by john bunyan part 2 stage 4 christiana yes you laughed heartily but prithi mercy tell me thy dream <coughs> mercy i was a dreaming that i sat all alone in a solitary place and was bemoaning of the hardness of my heart now i had not sat there long but me thought many were gathered about me to see me and to hear what it was that i said so they hearkened and i went on bemoaning the hardness of my heart at this some of them laughed at me some called me fool and some began to trust me about with that me thought i looked up and saw one coming with wings towards me so he came directly to me and said mercy what ail thee now when he had heard me make my complaint he said peace be to thee he also wiped my eyes with his handkerchief and clad me in silver and gold ahkl 16 18 11 ahkl 16 8 to 11 he put a chain about my neck and earrings in my ears and a beautiful crown upon my head then he took me by the hand and said mercy come after me so he went up and i followed till we came at a golden gate then he knocked and when they within had opened the man went in and i followed him up to a throne upon which one sat and he said to me welcome daughter the place looked bright and twinkling like the stars or rather like the sun and i thought that i saw your husband there so i awoke from my dream but did i laugh christiana laugh i and well you might to see yourself so well for you must give me leave to tell you that it was a good dream and that as you have began to find the first part true so you shall find the second at last god speaks once yeah twice yet man perceiveth it not in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed job 33 1415 we need not when a bed to lie awake to talk with god he can visit us while we sleep and cause us then to hear his voice our heart often times wakes when we sleep and god can speak to that either by words by proverbs by signs <coughs> by signs and similitudes as well as if one was awake mercy well i am glad of my dream for i hope hurry long to see it fulfilled to the making me laugh again christiana 
I think it is now high time to rise and to know what we must do. Mercy. Pray if they invite us to stay a while, let us willingly accept for the proffer. I am the more willing to stay a while here to grow better acquainted with these maids. Me thinks prudence, pity and charity have very comely and sober countenances. Christiana, we shall see what they will do. So when they were up and ready, they came down and they asked one another of their rest and if it was comfortable or not. Mercy. Very good, said Mercy. It was one of the best night's lodgings that I ever that ever I had in my life. Mercy. Very good, said Mercy. It was one of the best night's lodgings that ever I had in my life. Then said Prudence and Pity. If you will be persuaded to stay here a while, you shall have what the house will afford. Charity. I end that with a very good will, said Charity. So they consented and stayed there about a month and above and became very profitable one to another. And because Prudence would see how Christiana had brought up her children, she asked leave of her to catechize them. So she gave her free consent. Then she began with her youngest, whose name was James, Prudence. And she said, Come James, canst thou tell me who made thee? James, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. James, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Prudence, good boy, and canst thou tell who saved thee? James, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Prudence, good boy still, but how doth God the Father save thee? James, by his grace, Prudence, how doth God the Son save thee? James, by his righteousness, death and blood and life. Prudence, and how doth and how doth God the Holy Ghost save thee, James, by his illumination, by his renovation, and by his preservation? Then said Prudence to Christiana, You are to be commanded for thus bringing up your children. I suppose I need not ask the rest these questions, since the youngest of them can answer them so well. I will therefore now apply myself to the next youngest. Prudence. Then she said, Come, Joseph, for his name was Joseph. Will you let me catechize you, Joseph, with all my heart? Prudence. What is man, Joseph? A reasonable creature so made by God, as my brother said. Prudence. What is supposed by this word saved? Joseph, the man by sin, has brought himself into a state of captivity and misery. Prudence. What is supposed by his being saved by the Trinity? Joseph, that Sin is so great and mighty a tyrant that none can pull us out of its clutches but God. And that God is so good and loving to man as to pull him indeed out of this miserable state. Prudence. What is God's design in saving poor man? Joseph. The glorifying of his name. 
of his grace and justice etc and the everlasting happiness of his creature prudence who are they that will be saved joseph they that accept of his salvation prudence good boy joseph thy mother hath taught thee well and thou hast hearkened unto what she hath said unto thee then said prudence to samuel who was the eldest but one prudence come samuel are you willing that i should catechize you samuel yes forsooth if you please prudence what is heaven a place and state most blessed because god dwelt there what is hell samuel a place and states most awful because it is the dwelling place of sin the devil and death prudence why wouldst thou go to heaven samuel that i may see god and serve him without weariness that i may see christ and love him everlastingly that i may have that fullness of the holy spirit in me that i can by no means here enjoy prudence a very good boy and one that has learned well then she addressed herself to the eldest whose name was matthew and she and she said to him come matthew shall i also catechize you matthew with a very good will with a very good will prudence i asked then if there was ever anything that had a being antecedent to or before god matthew no for god is eternal nor is there anything excepting himself that had a being until the beginning of the first day for in the six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is prudence what do you think of the bible matthew it is the holy word of god prudence is there nothing written therein but what you understand matthew yes a great deal prudence what do you do when you meet with places therein that you do not understand matthew i think god is wiser than i i pray also that he will please to let me know all therein that he knows will be for my good prudence how believe you as touching the resurrection of the dead match you i believe they shall rise the same that was buried the same in nature do not in corruption and i believe this upon a double count first because god has promised it second because he is able to perform it then said prudence to the boys you must still hearken to your mother for she can teach you more you must also diligently give ear to what good talk you shall hear from others for your sakes do they speak good things observe also and that with carefulness what the heavens and the earth do teach you but especially be much in the meditation of that book which was the cause of your father's becoming a pilgrim i for my part my children will tell you what i can while you are here and shall be glad if you will ask me questions that tend to godly edifying now by that these pilgrims had been at this place a week mercy had a visitor that pretended some goodwill unto her and his name was mr brisk a man of some reading and that pretended to religion but a man that struck only close to the world so he came once or twice or more to mercy and offered love unto her now mercy was a fair countenance and therefore the more alluring her mind also was to be always busying of herself in doing for when she had nothing to do for herself she would be making hose and garments for others and would bestow them upon those that had need and mr brisk not knowing where and how 
she disposed of what she made seemed to be greatly taken for that he found her never idle i will warrant her a good housewife quoth he to himself mosi then revealed the business to the maidens that were of the house and inquired of them concerning him but they did know him better than she so they told her that he was a very busy young man and one who pretended to religion but was as they feared a stranger to the power that which is good nay then said mercy i will look no more on him for i purpose never to have a clog to my soul prudence then replied that there needed no matter of great discouragement to be given to him her continuing so as she had begun to do for the poor would quickly cool his courage so the next time he comes he finds her at her old work making things for the poor then said he what always at it yes said she yes said she either for myself or for others and what canst thou earn a day said he i do these things said she that i may be rich in good works laying up in store for myself a good foundation against the time to come that i may lay hold on eternal life first timothy 6:17 to 19 why pray thee what does thou with them said he clothe the naked said she with that his countenance fell so he forbear to come at her again and when he was asked the reason why he said that mercy was a pretty lass but troubled with ill conditions when he had left her prudence said did i not tell thee that mr brisk would soon forsake thee yeah he will rise up an ill report of thee for not withstanding his pretence to religion and his seeming love to mercy yet mercy and he are of temper so different that i believe they will never come together mercy i might have had husbands before now though i spoke not of it to any but there were such as did not like my conditions though never did any of them find fault with my person so they and i could not agree prudence mercy in our days is but little set by any further than as to its name the practice which is set forth by thy conditions there are but few that can abide mercy well said mercy if nobody will have me i will die unmarried or my conditions or my conditions shall be to me as a husband for i cannot change my nature and to have one who lies across to me in this that i purpose never to admit of as long as i live i had a sister named bountiful that was married to one of these churls but he and she could never agree but because my sister was resolved to do as she had begun that is to show kindness to the poor therefore her husband first cried her down at the cross and then turned her out of his doors prudence and yet he was a professor i warrant you mercy yes such a one as he was and of such as he the world is now full but i am for none of them all now matthew the eldest son of christiana fell sick and his sickness and his sickness was sore upon him for he was much pained in his bowels so that he was with it at times pulled as it were 
both ends together. They dwelt also not far from thence one Mr. Skill, an ancient and well approved physician. So Christiana desired it and entered the room and had a little observed the boy. He concluded that he was sick of the gripes. Then he said to his mother, What diet has met you of late fed upon? Diet, said Christiana, nothing but what is wholesome. The physician answered, This boy has been tampering with something that lies in his stomach undigested and that will not away without means, and I tell you he must be purged or else he will die. Samuel, then said Samuel, Mother, what was that which my brother did gather up and eat as soon as we were come from the gate that is at the head of this way? You know that there was an orchard on the left hand on the other side of the wall and some of the trees hung over the wall and my brother did pluck and eat. Christiana, true, my child, said Christiana, he did take thereof and did eat, naughty boy, as he was, I chid him, and yet he would eat thereof, Mr. Skill, I knew he had eaten something that was not wholesome food, and that food, to wit, that fruit is even the most harmful of all, it is the fruit of Beelzebub's orchard, I do marvel that none did warn you of it. Many have died thereof. Christiana. Then Christiana began to cry and she said, Oh, naughty boy, and oh, careless mother, what shall I do for my son? Mr. Skill. Come, do not be too much dejected. The boy may do well again, but he must purge and vomit. Christiana. Pray, sir, try the utmost of your skill with him, whatever it costs. Mr. Skill, nay, I hope I shall be reasonable. So he made him a purge, but it was too weak. It was said it was made of the blood of a goat, the ashes of a heifer, and some of the juice of his soap. Hebrews 9.13 and 9. Hebrews 10.1-4 when Mr. Skill had seen that the purge was too weak, he made one to the purpose. It was made ex carne et sanguine Christi of the flesh and blood of Christ. <coughs> John 6, 54-57, Hebrews 9:14. You know, physicians give strange medicines to their patients, and it was made into pills with a promise or two and a proportionable quantity of salt, Mark 9.49. Now he was to take them three at a time, fasting in half a quarter of a pint of the tears of repentance, Zechariah 12.10. When this portion was prepared and brought to the boy, he was loath to take it, though torn with the gripes, as if he should be pulled in pieces. Come, come, said the physician, you must take it. It goes against my stomach, said the boy. I must have you take it, said his mother. I shall vomit it up again, said the boy. Pray, sir, said Christiana to Mr. Skill, how does it taste? It has no ill taste, said the doctor. And with that, she touched one of the pills with the tip of her tongue. Oh, Matthew, she said. Oh, Matthew, said she. This portion is sweeter than honey. If thou lovest thy mother, if thou lovest thy brothers, if thou lovest mercy, if thou lovest thy life, take it. So, with much ado, after a short prayer for the blessing of God upon it, he took it. And it wrought kindly with him, it caused him to purge, it caused him to sleep and to rest quietly. It put him into a fine heat and breathing sweet and breathing sweet and breathing sweat and did quite rid him of his gripes. So in a little time he got up and walked about with a staff and would go from room to room and talk with prudence, pity, 
and charity of his distemper and how he was healed so when the boy was healed christian asked mr skill saying sir what will content you for your pains and care to and of my child and he said you must pay the master of the college of physicians hebrews chapter 13 11 15 according to rules made in that case and provided according to rules made in that case and provided christiana but sir said she what is this pill good for us mr skill it is a universal pill it is good against all the diseases that pilgrims are incident to and when it is well prepared it will keep good time out of mind Christiana pray sir make me up 12 boxes of them for if i can get these i will never take other physic mr skill these pills are good to prevent diseases as well as to cure when one is sick yeah i dare say it and stand to it that if a man will but use this physic as he should it will make him live forever john 651 but good christiana thou must give these pills no other way but as i have prescribed for if you do they will do no good so he gave unto christiana physic for herself and her boys and for mercy and bid matthew take heed how he ate any more green plums and kissed them and went his way it was told you before that prudence bid the boys that if any time they would they should ask her some questions that might be profitable and she would say something to them matthew then matthew who had been sick asked her why for the most part physic should be bitter to our palates prudence to show how unwelcome the word of god and the effects thereof are to a carnal heart matthew why does physic if it does good purge and cause to vomit prudence to show that the word when it works effectually cleanseth the heart and mind but look what the one doth to the body the other doth to the soul matthew what should we learn by seeing the flame of our fire go upwards and by seeing the beams and sweet influences of the sun strike downwards prudence by the going up of the fire we are thought to ascend to heaven by fervent and hot desires and by the sun sending his heat beams and sweet influences downwards we are thought the savior of the world though high reaches down with his grace and love to us below matthew whence have the clouds their water prudence out of the sea matthew what may we learn from that prudence that ministers should fetch their doctrine from god matthew why do they empty themselves upon the earth prudence to show that ministers should give out what they know of god to the world matthew why is the rainbow caused by the sun prudence to show that the covenant of god's grace is confirmed to us in christ matthew why do the springs come from the sea to us through the earth prudence to show that the grace of god comes to us through the body of christ matthew why do some of the springs rise out of the tops of high hills prudence to show that the spirit of grace shall spring up in some that are great and mighty as well as in many that are poor and low matthew why does the fire fasten upon the candle wick prudence to show that unless grace doth kindle upon the heart there will be no true light of life in us matthew why are the wick and tallow and all spent to maintain the light of the candle prudence 
to show that body and soul and all should be at the service of and spend themselves to maintain in good condition that grace of god that is in us matthew why does the pelican pierce her own breast with her bill prudence to nourish her young ones with her blood and thereby to show that christ the blessed so loved his young his people to save them from death by his blood matthew what may one learn by hearing the cock to crow prudence learn to remember peter's sin and peter's repentance the cock's crowing shows also the day is coming on let then the crowing of the cock put thee in mind of that last and terrible day of judgment now about this time their mouth was out wherefore they signified to those of the house that it was convenient for them to up and be going then said joseph to his mother it is proper that you forget not to send to the house of mr interpreter to pray him to grant that mr great heart should be sent unto us that he may be our conductor for the rest of the way good boy said she i had almost forgot so she drew up a petition and prayed mr watchman the porter to send it by some fit man to her good friend mr interpreter who when it was come and he had seen the contents of the petition said to the messenger go tell them that i will send him when the family where christian was saw that they had a purpose to go forward they called the whole house together to give thanks to their king for sending of them such profitable guests as this which done they said unto christiana and shall we not show thee something as our custom is to do to pilgrims on which thou mayest meditate when thou art upon the way so they took christiana her children and mercy into the closet and showed them one of the apples that eve ate of and that she also did give to her husband and that for the eating of which they were both turned out of paradise and asked her what she thought that was then christiana said it is food or poison i know not which so they opened the matter to her and she held up her hands and wondered genesis 3:6 romans 7:24 then they had her to a place and showed her jacob's ladder genesis 28:12 now at that time there were some angels ascending upon it so christiana looked and looked to see the angels go up so did the rest of the company then they were going into another place to show them something else but james said to his mother pray bid them stay here a little longer but this is a curious sight so they turned again and stood feeding their eyes with this so pleasant a prospect after this they had them into a place where did hang up a golden anchor so they bid christiana take it down for said they you shall have it with you for it is of absolute necessity that you should that you may lay hold of that within the veil hebrews 6:19 and stand steadfast in case you should meet with turbulent weather joel 3:16 so they were glad thereof then they took them and had them to the mount upon which abraham our father offered up isaac his son and showed them the altar the wood the fire and the knife for they remain to be seen to this very day genesis 22:9 
when they had seen it, they held up their hands and blessed themselves and said, Oh, what a man for love to his master and for denial to himself was Abraham. After they had showed them all these things, Prudence took them into a dining room where stood a pair of excellent virginals. So she played upon them and turned what she had showed them into this excellent song saying, Eve's apple we have showed you of that be you aware you have seen Jacob's ladder too upon which angels are an anchor you received have but let not this suffice until with Abraham you have gave your best a sacrifice. Now about this time one knocked at the door, so the porter opened, and behold, Mr. Greatheart was there. But when he was come in, what joy was there, for it came now afresh again into their minds, how but a while ago he had slain old, grim, bloody man the giant, and had delivered them from the lions. Then said Mr. Greatheart to Christian and to Mercy, My Lord has sent each of you a bottle of wine and also some parched corn together with a couple of pomegranates. He has also sent the boys some figs and raisins to refresh you in your way. Then they addressed themselves to their journey and prudence and pity went along with them. When they came to the gate, Christian asked the porter if any of late went by. He said no. Only once, sometime since. Who also told me that of late there had been a great robbery committed on the king's highway as you go. But, said he, the thieves are taken and will shortly be tried for their lives. Will shortly be tried for their lives. Then Christiana and Mercy were afraid, but Matthew said, Mother, we are nothing as long as Mr. Greatheart is to go with us and to be our conductor. Then said Christiana to the porter, Sir, I am much obliged to you for all the kindnesses that you have showed to me since I came hither, and also for that you have been so loving and kind to my children. I know not how to gratify your kindness, wherefore pray as a token of my respect to you, accept of this small might. So she put a gold angel in his hand. And he made her a low obeisance, and said, Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head want no ointment. Ecclesiastes 9.8 Let mercy live, and not die, and let not her works be few. Deuteronomy 33.6 And to the boys he said, Do you fly youthful lusts, and follow after Godliness with them that are grave and wise. Second Timothy 2.22 So shall you put gladness into your mother's heart and obtain praise of all that are sober-minded. So they thanked the porter and departed. Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Part 2, The Stage, Fifth, The Fifth Stage. Now I saw in my dream that they went forward until they were come to the brow of the hill, where Pity, bethinking herself, cried out, Alas, I have forgot what I intended to bestow upon Christiana and her companions. I will go back and fetch it. So she ran and fetched it. While she was gone, Christiana thought she heard in a groove a little way off on the right hand a most curious melodious note with words much like this. Through all my life thy favor is so frankly showed to me that in thy house forevermore my dwelling place shall be, and listening still, she thought she heard another answer it, saying, For why, 
the lord our god is good his mercy is forever sure his truth at all times firmly stood and shall from age to age endure so christian asked prudence who it was that made those curious notes song 2 11 and 12 they are answered she our country birds they sing these notes but seldom except it be at the spring when the flowers appear and the sun shines warm and then you may hear them all day long i often said she go out to hear them we also of times keep them tame in our house they are very fine company for us when we are melancholy also they make the woods and groves and solitary places places desirable to be in by this time pity was come again so she said to christiana look here i have brought thee a scheme of all those things that thou hast seen at our house upon which thou mayst look when thou finds thyself forgetful and call those things again to remembrance for thy edification and comfort now they began to go down the hill into the valley of humiliation it was a steep hill and the way was slippery but they were very careful so they got down pretty well when they were down in the valley pity said to christiana this is the place where christian your husband met with the paul pian apollon and where they had that dreadful fight that they had i know you cannot but have heard thereof but be of good courage as long as you have here mr great heart to be your guide and conductor we hope you will fare the better so when these two had committed the pilgrims under the conduct of their guide he went forward and they went after mr great heart then said mr great heart we need not be so afraid of this valley for here is nothing to hurt us unless we procure it to ourselves it is true christian did here meet with apollon with whom he had also a sore combat but that fray was the fruit of those slips that he got in his going down the hill but they that get slips there must look for combats here and hence it is that this valley has got so hard a name but the common people when they hear that some frightful thing has befallen such an one in such a place are of opinion that the place is hunted with some foul fiend or evil spirit when alas it is for the fruit of their doing that such things do befall them there this valley of humiliation is of itself as fruitful a place as any the crow flies over and i am persuaded if we could hit upon it we might find somewhere here about something that might give us an account why christian was so hardly beset in this place then said james to his mother lo yonder stands a pillar and it looks as if someone was as if something was written there on let us go and see what it is so they went and found they written let christians slips before he came hither and the battles that he met with in this place be a warning to those that come after lo said their guide did not i tell you that there was something hereabouts 
that would give intimation of the reason why Christian was so hard beset in this place. Then turning to Christiana, he said, No disparagement to Christian more than to any others whose hap and lot it was. For it is easier going up than down this hill, and that can be said but of few hills in all these parts of the world. But we will leave the good man. He is at rest. He also had a brave victory over his enemy. Let him grant that dwelleth above, that we fear no words when we come be tried than he. But we will come again to this valley of humiliation. It is the best and most fruitful piece of ground in all those parts. It is fat ground and as you see consisteth, consisteth much in meadows. And if a man was to come here in the summer time as we do now, if he knew not anything before thereof and if he also delighted himself in the sight of his eyes, he might see that which would be delightful to him. Behold how green this valley is, also how beautified with lilies, song to one. I have known many laboring men that have got good estates in this valley of humiliation, for God riseth the proud, but for God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. For God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. James 4 6, 1 Peter 5 5. Indeed, it is a very fruitful soil and doth bring forth by handfuls. Some also have wished that the next way to their father's house were here, that <coughs> they might be troubled no more with either hills or mountains to go over, but the way is way and there is an end. Now as they were going along and talking, they espied a boy feeding his father's sheep. The boy was in very mean clothes, but of a very fresh and well-favored countenance, and as he sat by himself, he sung, Hark, said Mr. Greatheart, to what the shepherd's boy saith. So they hearkened as he said, He that is down needs fear no fall, he that is low no pride, he that is humble ever shall have God to be his guide. I am content with what I have, little bit or much. And, Lord, contentment still I crave, because thou savest such. Fullness to such a burden is, that go on pilgrimage. Here little and hereafter bliss is best from age to age. Then said the guide, Do you hear him? I will dare to say that this boy lives a merrier life and wears more of the herb called heart's ease in his bosom than he that is clad in silk and velvet. But we will proceed in our discourse. In this valley our Lord formerly had his country house. He loved much to be here. He loved also to walk these meadows where he found the air was pleasant. Besides, here a man shall be free. From the noise and from the hurryings of this life, all states are full of noise and confusion. Only the valley of humiliation is that empty and solitary place. Here a man shall not be so let. 
and hindered in his contemplation as in other places he is apt to be this is a valley that nobody walks in but those that love a pilgrim's life and though christian had the hard hap to meet here with apollyon and to enter with him in a brisk encounter yet i must tell you that in former times men have met with angels here hosea 12 4 have found pearls here matthew 13 46 and have in this place found the words of life proverbs 8 36 did i say our lord had here in former days his country house and that he loved here to walk i will add in this place and to the people that love and trace these grounds he has left a yearly revenue to be faithfully paid them at certain seasons for their maintenance by the way and for their further encouragement to go on in their pilgrimage samuel now as they went on samuel said to mr great heart sir i perceive that in this valley my father and apollyon had their battle but where about was the fight for i perceive this valley is large mr great heart your father had the battle with apollyon at a place yonder before us in a narrow passage just beyond forgetful green and indeed that place is the most dangerous place in all these parts for if at any place pilgrims meet with any burnt it is when they forget what favors they have received and how unworthy they are of them this is the place also where others have been hard put to it but more of the place when we are come to it for I persuade myself that to this day there remains either some sign of the battle or some monument to testify that such a battle there was fought. Mercy. Then said Mercy, I think I am as well in this valley as I have been anywhere else in all our journey. The place, meetings, suits with my spirit. I love to be in such places where there is no rattling with coaches no rumbling with wheels methinks here one may without much molestation be thinking what he is whence he came what he has done and to what the king has called him here one may think and break at heart and melt it one's spirit until one's eyes become as the fish pools in heshbon song 74 they that go rightly through this valley of baka make it a well the rain that god sends down from heaven upon them that are here also fill the pools this valley is that from whence also the king will give to his their vineyards and they that go through it shall sing as christian did for all he met with apollyon psalm 84 5 7 oshea 2 15 mr great heart it is true said their guide i have gone through this valley many a time and never was better than when here i have also seen i have also been a conduct to several pilgrims and they have confessed the same to this man will i look said the king even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembled at my word isaiah 662 now they were come to the place where the aforementioned battle was fought then said the guide to christiana her children and mercy this is the place on this ground christian stood and up there came apollyon against him and look and look did i not tell you did i not tell you here is some of your husband's blood upon these stones to this day behold also how here and there are yet to be seen upon the place some of the shivers of apollyon's broken darts see also how they did beat the ground with their feet as they fought to make good their places against each other how also with their 
by blows that it split the very stones in pieces verily christian did here play the man and showed himself as stout as hercules could as stout as hercules could had he been there even he himself when apollyon was beat he made his retreat to the next valley that is called the valley of the shadow of death unto which we shall come anon lo yonder also stands a monument on which is engraven this battle and christians victory to his fame throughout all ages so because it stood just on the wayside before them they step to it and read the writing which word for word was this hard by here was a battle fought most strange and yet most true christian and apollyon fought each other to subdue the man so bravely played the man he made the pian to fly of which a monument i stand the same to testify when they had passed by this place they came upon the borders of the borders of the shadow of death this valley was longer than the other a place also most strangely haunted with evil things as many are able to testify but these women and children went the better through it because they had daylight and because mr great heart was their conductor when they were entering upon this valley they thought they heard a groaning as of dying men a very great groaning they thought also that they did hear also they thought also that they did hear words of lamentation spoken as of some in extreme torment these things made the boys to quake the women also looked pale and wan but their guide bid them be of good comfort so they went on a little further and they thought that they felt the ground being to shake under them as if some hollow place was there they heard also a kind of hissing as of serpents but nothing as it appeared then said the boys are we not yet at the end of this doleful place but the guide also bid them be of good courage and look well to their feet lest happily said he you be taken in some snare now james began to be sick but i think the cause thereof was fear so his mother gave him some of that glass of spirits that had been given her at the interpreter's house and three of the pills that mr skill had prepared and the boy began to revive thus they went on till they came to about the middle of the valley and then christiana said may things i see something yonder upon the road before us a thing of a shape such as i have not seen then said joseph mother what is it an ugly thing child an ugly thing said she but mother what is it like said he it's like i cannot tell what said she and now it is but a little way off then said she it is nigh well said mr great heart let them that are most afraid keep close to me so the fian came on and the conductor met it but when it was come to him it vanished to all their sides then remembered they what had been said some time ago resist the devil and it will flee away from you james 47 they went therefore on as being a little refreshed but they had not gone far before mercy looking behind her saw as she thought something most like a lion and it came at a great paddling pace after as it had a hollow voice of roaring and at every roar it gave it made the valley echo and all their hearts to ache save the heart of him that was their guide so it came up and mr great heart went behind and put the pilgrims all before him the line also came a pace 
The lion also came on apace, and Mr. Greatheart addressed himself to give him battle, First Peter 5, 8, 9. But when he saw that it was determined that resistance should be made, he also drew back and came no further.